Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for opening this video. I'm Claudia, real estate agent in Jamaica. If you want to sell, buy, or build real estate, hit the subscribe button and remember the notification bell. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody. Hi, I'm Claudia. And I'm Tony. Thank you so much for opening the video. So we are real estate agents in Jamaica. And we're so happy today. We're going to be bringing you a beautiful opportunity in a three bedroom, two bathroom house. Wow, Tony. In what a, a beautiful community. property. In a gated community, right? It's in Emerald Estates. Which is past Rio Nuevo, past content, <laughs> past Ocean Ridge. We past... should also tell them that it's in St. Mary. Oh, so, yeah, we should tell it in St. Mary. <laughs> it's off the north coast, right? It's right on the main on the north coast. Perfect property for you. Ladies and gentlemen, while you stay with me on this journey, I want to talk to you about some books. Now, one of the reasons why I know a lot of little things is because I read a lot of books. Literally, I do read a lot of books. My mother was the one who encouraged reading. You know, every evening I come home, she said, Claudia, come, come read for me. And I jump up on the bed and I read, read everything. And the star, you name it, everything in the star, love, learn this, that, that. I had books, books upon books, and that carried me through. Now, one of the first books, I'm going to talk to you about three books that I picked up that changed my life. The first book that really changed my life and just let me do a 180 turn, if you could have called it that. Give a new perspective. A totally new perspective. Especially when it comes to money, the money I was earning at the time. I used to say it's a little bit of money me I earn, mm -hmm. right? But it's not how much you earn, it's not even how much you save. It's what you do with it. What you do with it. Yes. That book is called The Richest Man in Babylon by George Clanston. A classic book. Yeah, all of you know the book. You've all heard about the book. Some have of you read have it? it. You've read it. It's on your bookshelf right if you have read it i put in the description below my amazon affiliate link now when you buy from the amazon affiliate link i do get paid for recommending this book to you now this is a book that i also we also go through this book in our zoom sessions sunday at six so ladies and gentlemen buy the book jump into our zoom sessions now what did this book teach me fundamentally the very basic thing it taught me was that i had to keep part of the money that i earn part of the money that them pay me every month i was not to give it away to everybody not to give it away to the electricity man the water man the rent man the loans officer the loan company, I should say that. The loans officer. <laughs> uh, loans officer. Wish you could have get the money now, right? The loans company. Right? Not to give it away to the credit card company. All these things. I am to keep at least a portion. Well, the book said 10%. Mm -hmm. And I started out with 10%, Tony. But when I started at 10% and the silly little money in my bank account, you know, them days you got cash a check. Right? So you got a bank to cash a check. And you get your money, you go home. And me start to put aside my 10%. Man, let me a Where did you put dollars. it away? Like, put it away in a tin or you did? Put it under my mattress. What do you mean? <laughs> Count out money. Right under my head when me sleep. Me have my dollars and me go to count out and money to sweep me. And I started to put away 20%. Mm -hmm. 30%. 40%. That's what I did. So what were you doing to supplement yourself? Well, hear what happened now. You see, when you, you start to put away that little bit of money, it's amazing how you have this money, you know. Mm -hmm. And you have to figure out what you're going to do with this money. Well, the same book, mm -hmm. Richest Man in Babylon, told you what to do with the money. You are going to now make that money work for you. Make the money work. For yeah, you. you have to multiply. But we can't tell them the whole of the book. They need to go read the book. Or join our Zoom. Or join our Zoom session, right? So the book, 
tells you, it actually tell you what to do as a matter of fact, the book, the book gives you seven, it gives you seven things that you, that need, to that you need to do, right? Mm -hmm. Which are the ones you enjoyed, you the ones you connected with? The, I connected with key part of your money. So part of what you earn is yours to keep, one. I also connected with the one that says, where you live, you must own it. Yes. Own the property you live in. Own the property you live in. That's, I connected with that that's one. That's why you bought your home so early in life. Yes. The richest man in Babylon say, own the property you live in. So that resonated with me and I started looking. Remember, I'm 10%, you know. And with that 10% money too, I started. Because I have the cash, I started juggling sweetie and biscuit. All these things out of my drawer, right? Because I have cash and I could have buy that and sell it back. Because it teach you that you must not only save the money, but multiply it. Multiply it. Right. And what was the other thing it, it really taught me? Tony, I've read the book. What, what resonates with you? Um, you must get down to your necessary expenses. Boy, I'm think you've gone down too far with necessary expenses. <laughs> 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 well, it's, it does say you are to only... How does it put it? You are to only spend money on necessary expenses. expenses. Yeah. yeah. So if it's not a necessary expense, don't spend it. So that is how you're going to be able to keep 50% of your money. Right. Right? So if you have 10 shoes, do you need an 11th shoe? No, you don't. Do you have two one bags? Do you need three? That kind of a thing, right? And was there anything else? You must be disciplined in making sure that you only spend on your necessary expenses. All right? No. Missed opportunities. That was the other one that resonated with you. What was that? Good thing I'm a good driver. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's also a part in the book where he talks about missed opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, so many of us have missed opportunities. I can full up a whole bag of missed opportunities for me. In terms of what? Real estate? Real estate. So many things. But the key though, if you miss two opportunities, take three. Take number three? Take number three. <clears throat> okay. So you miss number one, you miss number two, take number three. You miss number four, you miss number five, take number six. <laughs> yeah. That's it. You must take some of the opportunities, right? You can't miss all of them. But some persons miss every opportunity that come in front of them. Because they're what, too slow to act? Too slow to act. Or too, are they, not aware of the opportunity? They hesitate. When I when I was by my first house, I miss a squire, I said, Claudia, I don't know, I sell some house at Fairview Park. Why not go buy one? Since I've been looking for house to one whole year. And I said, that's quite, I mean, I like Spanish town. Anyway, I decide to make a look, I'm going to go and look. Mm -hmm. And when I looked, we never look on the house. We got the people in the office and go look on the, the model unit, mock-up unit and the desk. Stop. Oh. The, the decks. Like a computer, you know. So it's like how we show both a 3D image now. Right. We never have that friend. We have some cardboard or something where they make up and show the two bedroom house. And I did pick 657. If I had not taken that opportunity. So I paid 175 on this side of the road. Across the street, they paid two hundred and fifty thousand. Six months later, later, missed opportunities. Right now, we're selling Belleca. Those of you who sit around now are missing out on the one bedroom, one bathroom at Belleca for ten point five million, or the two bedrooms for thirteen point five million. Even though you could afford it, don't let that happen to you. That almost happened to me. Talking about I'm not going to Spanish town is a good thing to listen to. The creator I said, Claudia, go on go buy the house. And stop waste time. You don't need somewhere to live. Stop waste time. And you did need somewhere to yeah, live. Yeah, stop it. Alright. So that is the, the richest, richest man, man in Babylon. Babylon. I picked up another book. This is a book called Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. The link is also below. I like the, the title. Think. Think and grow rich. That's the thing. 
That's the operative, you know, the word, think. Right, they didn't say work hard. No, not like that. <laughs> I'm not going to get 10 jobs and, and, and I, work for 10 hours or 50 hours out of the day yeah. if you can't find it. They didn't say that. They said, think. When I read that book, that resonated with me. I have to use my brain. A lot of you are not using your brain. I know it is operating on road. Road. You just get up every morning and yes, I go to work, I'm going to shower my bed, meet my breakfast, I'm going to work. Even when you're in your office, you're not thinking, you're not using your brain. You're not thinking, how can I do this this way? How can I change it this way? How can I make this job easier? Easier for, even <laughs> for yourself. You know, when I started out at the insurance company, my job was one of the Low job level, you know, I was tough in envelopes. Mm -hmm. And Tony and I develop a system, you see, man. Everybody that they are ping pong, one one the envelope. And I develop a system to just open up some envelopes, pick up some of them, boom, 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 boom. It's like a machine, you know. <laughs> put in envelope in a, in a, in a, in a put in I remember, in I remember. envelope. Your mama develop a system to do it. You understand? Because I wanted me, me finish that more on my free time for it. Don't think. No. Think and grow rich. You have also read the book. What have what is your overreaching thing that you learned? Um, you have to cultivate a mindset of what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. and from there, there's not really steps, but things that happen for you to create that mindset and envision whatever it is that you want to do. You don't need a business idea. You're to get rich from things that happen like what time you mean? like for example when you're coming up with your idea mm -hmm. the first thing you must have is a burning desire mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and you must have organized planning in how you're going to achieve this burning desire right. so the burning desire is to own your house mm -hmm. own the home that you live in mm -hmm must really really want it that's the first thing that's the first thing you must really really want this thing the right. desire must be a burning desire must be strong right mm -hmm. now sometimes that happened because something else happened like me what happened was a man raised my rent right plus before that my father they told me when i'm 15 right so from long time i'm a burning desire so me want my house nobody now gonna throw me out right mm -hmm. and so the desire must be strong and then you must do some actions to back it up, back no? it up yeah. so you must look at houses you must go check out how much you qualify you for save your deposit save your deposit and all of that and you must call Miss Davis and call Tony <laughs> <laughs> right now so you have some planning in that there's also something else that I learned personally in the book talks about the power of the mastermind group that is so fundamental Anything you're going to do that you're going to do strong and big and well and well cannot be done alone. Cannot be done alone. You alone don't have the information or the brain to do it. The creator and his wisdom put whole heap of wisdom in other people's brain too. What you have to do is harness that power, bring together a mastermind group. And that's what our Zoom is about. Yeah, that's what our Zoom is about. Masterminded saying of people, not master action group, but mastermind group. This is the group that will think on these things, that will come up with the ideas of what needs to be done and how it is to be done and all of that. So ladies and gentlemen, you have to do that. The third book I want to tell you about is a book called Rich Dad Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So that's the game changer. That book was also the game changer. It took, these two books took you to point like A and B, B, but this but this third book really took you yeah, to the finish the, line. Yeah, like, yeah. This book now just take me up, run with it, boom, finish line. What I liked about um, Rich Dad Poor Dad, it was very specific. It taught specific lessons. Yes. On how to get to the next level. Right. One of the specific things it taught me though, fundamental, is that I must know the difference between asset and liabilities yeah so when i have my cash which is an asset if i'm going to spend the cash i must be spending most of that cash on assets not liabilities, not liabilities. which is what a lot of persons do you turn a perfectly good asset like cash that you collect every month from your pay slip right the thing is, so we work so hard to cultivate this cash. It takes you what, thirty days? Yes. Eight hours a day. Right. <laughs> and then within a second, you blow it. You blow it. 
the cash that okay. you have taken th yeah 30 days to accumulate 30 days so of hard work you get to go to your bed five o'clock make sure you clean your shoes or your boss have a vex if you walk you with dirty boot and to tell and to think it takes you one day to mm. just totally I dump it into liabilities right. you, you decide to have jps flow who else nwc the um the cable person everybody to get paid you're like food to be buying everything just done you can't keep the richest man in babylon so i keep your 10 percent <laughs> you're giving it away ladies and gentlemen so that's the fundamental thing he taught me difference between assets and liabilities and that i am to really and truly have more assets than liability so my liabilities now are my two daughters and i've now added a grandson Santa. And that is only three liabilities I have. I don't have no more. I don't want no more. Well, I want some more grandchildren, right? But assets and liabilities. Ladies and gentlemen, we're at Emerald. I just did the turn so that they can feast your eye on where you're going to be living, right? It's nice. Isn't I like it? the orange. It has a really nice pop to this road. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, give us a call if you want a three-bedroom, two-bathroom house in this gated complex. Thank you so much. See you inside.